Two of the most significant Middle East peace deals, Camp David Accords and the Egyptian-Israeli Peace Agreement. William Quant was involved in both. He was a member of the National Security Council in the Nixon and Carter administrations, and he's now a professor at the University of Virginia. And in full disclosure, I should also acknowledge that he was my academic advisor when I was a Middle East Studies major, Foreign Affairs at UVA. Uh, welcome to the show, Professor. It's good Thank to you. talk to you. Uh, you, were, you were always a tough grader. How do you grade President Obama and this administration's uh, response? Well, a, a week ago, I would have said they were somewhere in the low B range, but I think <laughs> they've gotten up to kind of B plus, A minus. Uh, you know, they've been running behind events, but in revolutionary times, that's not surprising. And I think they've just about got it right. They seem to be pushing hard for a, a quick resolution of the crisis, working with the Egyptian military, which is an important institution with whom they have good contacts, and accepting the inevitability that President Mubarak's got to step down and do so quickly. Uh, so I think so far, so good. Uh, uh, they've ramped up the pressure in the last couple of days, but this is still the Egyptians' decision to make. We've probably done most of what we can to say we strongly support the uh, peaceful outcome mm -hmm. uh, that leads to an opening toward democracy. Why do you think the U.S. was caught so flat-footed? I mean, it's all of a sudden become common knowledge that Egypt's second biggest recipient of foreign aid and uh, ostensibly the, the key Arab ally in the Middle East for this country. How did we not pick up that there was this level of discontent? I, th I think the discontent was obvious. I mean, I've been going to Egypt for 20 or 30 years, and in the last four or five years, it was clear that a lot of Egyptians were fed up with the same old faces in the same positions. But that's true in many parts of the world, and certainly in the Middle East. And it takes something to create the spark. And Tunisia caught us probably all by surprise. And Tunisia had an impact on the younger generation in Egypt that began to think, maybe we can do it too. And there was a crucial moment when they realized that they had a lot of support in Egyptian society and that the military was remaining at least neutral, if not sympathetic to their demands. So that was, those were all difficult to predict uh, events. When they came together, they created a, uh, a really explosive moment, and that's what we're seeing right now. But, I mean, Mubarak has been such a longtime ally of the United States for 30 years now. What was the succession plan uh, that you know of in terms of what this country wanted to see happen after he stepped down? Well, one of the frustrating things about President Mubarak in recent years was that he really wouldn't tip his hand about what he was thinking about after he went. He was famously had said that I will stay in office until my last breath. Well, mm -hmm. that wasn't, you know, a very good plan. So the alternative seemed to be his son, who was not very popular, and it made Egyptians think that this was going to turn out to be a kind of dynastic succession, which they made fun of. They didn't, they thought, they, they didn't deserve to be treated that way. So there really was a kind of anticipated vacuum. Maybe he would run again, maybe it would be his son, but there was no real sense that anything would change for the better. And I think that's one of the frustrations that really uh, began, began to sink in. We need a, some vision of where the country's going. Now, if Mubarak six months ago had said the kinds of things that he has said in the last two or three days, that he won't run, run his son won't, he's open to constitutional reform, democratic elections, he might have been treated as a really admirable figure who helped prepare the way for a, mm -hmm. a new era in Egypt. But he didn't do that. Aaron Miller was just on the show and he said this is this is just the beginning. What's this the beginning of? I mean, can we really assume that Jordan, Yemen, countries uh, in the region are at risk right now of uprisings? You know, there is discontent in those places and, and elsewhere. Um, it's not easy for me to predict where another Egypt-like or Tunisia-like uprising might take place. I think it could be Algeria although the military there would be more stubborn and resistant, I think. Uh, Syria is having some troubles now, but again, I think the regime will fight back hard there. The monarchies, Jordan and Morocco, seem to have immunized themselves better from this mm -hmm. kind of uprising. They can get rid of governments without getting rid of the monarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, Yemen looks like it's got some real turmoil going on, but um, those are the obvious 
problem areas, but um, we'll see. All right. Professor Quant, thanks for making time and coming on the show. You're welcome.